So this will be the conclusion of the integral we started in the last video, which began here. And we're trying to get to the point where this integration formula is actually useful to us. And we completed the square, did a bunch of factoring. The last thing we were trying to do when the, the last video concluded was we were trying to create a 1 right here. So we factored a 49 over 4 out of these two terms from within that denominator. Uh, the last issue is that we could try to let u equal this whole entire piece, but then u will not have a square on it. We need this term to be one thing squared, not 49 over 4 times something squared. So what we need to do before we can do the u substitution to complete this integral is we're going to need to manipulate the last little piece in this denominator. I'm also going to, since this is a product now, I can go ahead and I can take the square root of 49 over 4 and the square root of 49 over 4 is going to end up being 7 over 2. So that'll be outside the root and then in the next line I'm actually going to bring it out here with the 5. So that's a constant now that's going to be able to come out here with the 5 and we'll take care of that on the next line. But I have a 1 in place where I need it. I want this to be one thing squared. And in order to make this second piece be one thing squared, I'm going to need to realize that that's a 2 squared and that's a 7 squared. So if I rewrote what I had back here as 2 times the quantity x minus 5 halves over 7, all squared, this is linear. So if I let u equal this quantity that's linear, and sorry, my <clears throat> excuse me, my negative 5 halves got a little bit sloppy there, but if I let u equal what we have inside this set of grouping symbols as being squared, since what's inside of this set of grouping symbols is linear, its derivative is going to be a constant, and we don't need to have any x's up here to cancel with what we pick up when we attempt to do our substitution. So now <clears throat> I'm going to clean this up one more time before taking the, the substitution steps. I'm going to pull the 7 halves out here. It's going to be 5 divided by 7 halves. Rather than dividing by 7 halves, I'd like to multiply by 2 sevenths. So that'll be 5 times 2 sevenths, which gives us 10 over 7. And then in the, <coughs> excuse me, and then in the denominator, try to write it a little bit more clearly on this line. I have one great big quantity being squared now. And that great big quantity is a 2 times the quantity x minus 5 halves all over 7. If I let u equal what's inside this set of grouping symbols, I'm then going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, and I'll be able to use the formula that we wrote down a long time ago at the top of the page to actually evaluate the integral. So we'll do the substitution at this point. So u is going to be equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 5 halves over 7. Now if you think about distributing 2 over 7 into this set of grouping symbols, your derivative du dx is just going to be the coefficient of the x to the first. It's just going to be 2 sevenths. And so what I'm going to replace the dx with is going to be, if I multiply each side by dx, divide each side by 2 sevenths, I'm going to be able to replace the dx with this. So if I bring this line across here, have the 10 sevenths out in front already, 1 in the numerator, sorry I'm off the screen there, 1 in the numerator, have a 1 as the first component underneath the root, I'm putting u in place of what we had being squared initially, so now we do have formed what we wrote up here just with a different variable in place. Uh, in place of the dx right here, I'm going to need to get 7 du over 2 or 7 halves du. This 7 halves can come out here. I'm just going to try to do a little bit of cancellation with the, with the constants here. You know, I have a 10 in the numerator, a 2 in the denominator. So I can cancel a 2 from each of those, and it will leave me a 5 there and a 1 there. And then these 7s are going to cancel perfectly. So I'm just going to end up with 5 as my remaining coefficient. And then the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared is going to be the inverse sine of u plus a constant c. Now technically I should have a set of grouping symbols here, but we've done this a 
many, many times. If you distribute 5 into the constant c that you don't know the value of, it's 5 times a constant c that you still don't know the numerical value of. So just leave it as a single constant c, do the back substitution, and the end result is going to be the antiderivative of what we started with initially. So u is equal to this big mess right here, so that's what we have to get inside the inverse sign. So we're going to be looking at 2 times the quantity x minus 5 halves all over 7. That's what's inside your inverse sign. And then I kind of ran out of room for my constant c, but I'll tack it on at the bottom there. So there's the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of what we started with at the top of the screen.